I come to bear witness that there is no other God but Jehovah, and that Jesus Christ is his only son, a prophet, and savior of the world, that there is no other name whereby men shall be saved, but by and through the name of Jesus Christ. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ, the only son of the most sovereign omnipotent God is Lord. Grace and mercy to the world and to my kingdom, brothers and sisters, peace be unto you, and God be glorified. And as Paul said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. I believe we're living in a critical time as we move forward on this series that God has given me to give to you today. And I will open it up with this and say, in life, the only thing that is consistent is change. Note here that change is always changing. No change, no progress. Thus, we bring you this series this morning entitled, The Metamorphosis, Grace to Change. Grace to Change to change. You have the grace of God to change from your old ways as you move forward and the things of God being your new ways. Let's go in your Bibles to Romans chapter 12 and there we'll be reading from verse 2. The supplicant scripture that will follow will be 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 through 21. Again Romans chapter 12 verse 2 and it reads and it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, changing is to prove something. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And thereby, we'll start with, uh, we'll read verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We'll read verse 17, and we'll trust God that you get the meaning of what God will have you to have this morning. Verse 17, and it reads, it says, it says, "For, for our light affliction which is but for a moment work it for us a fair exceeding an eternal weight of glory and is that second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 well we'll get there verse 17 reads it says therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Let's drop down to verse 21. It says, for he has made him to be sin for us. who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And I'm going to use for a text this morning dealing with the insects in Scripture. And that is the caterpillar and the butterfly. You will crawl before you fly. I want you to consider six things. Again, the caterpillar and the butterfly. You will crawl before you fly. Now, the word metamorphosis means the process of transformation from an adult from an immature person to an adult form. Again, the process of transformation from an immature form to an adult form. Now, to give you some backdrop on um, what the Bible thinks about insects and how the lessons can be taught and also won through understanding God's superintendent for insects, it gives us a greater measure of how to understand God's word. 
The Bible has much to say about the insectual world that were determined to exterminate the human race. Insects have been spoken about all through the Holy Bible on many occasions. The Bible talks about the hornet or the wasp defeating an army found in the book of Deuteronomy. There's also the Colorado beater, the uh, Nebraska grasshopper, as well as the New Jersey locust, the universal beater, as well as the honeybee that is known for a beeline. His line, he flies so straight that he has the reputation of having a beeline. The locusts God used in, the, in, in Egypt when God was bringing on ten plagues, and Solomon said it best when he said, Go to the ant, the slugger. So we can learn from the insectual world because God has sprinkled insects as they made their way off of Noah's ark and got back into the world God can teach us lesson through the insectual world as well as the animal kingdom, as well as the fowls of the air. It's only for the trained mind as well as the trained ear to be able to hear what God says concerning the metamorphosis, grace to change. How many of you in here today know that you need to change something in your life? I mean, you need to change something that, that you've been maybe wrestling with yourself over a period of time, and it has just appeared that the more you do the same thing, the more you do the same thing. And you find yourself saying to yourself privately in your cocoon, saying, when am I going to change? And as I told you before, the only thing that's consistent in life is change. You see, the metamorphosis is always metamorphosizing. And when you understand that God is interested in seeing you to change for the right reason, to do the right things in your life, then you won't remain stagnant. There is no progress if you're not willing to change. Even your circumstances around you will not change until you change. You waiting on everybody else to change while you're not changing, and they're changing and seeing you're not changing. You will only notice the difference when you start to change. If you've ever been in a situation where it appears that everything's remained the same, it is remaining the same because you haven't changed. How many of you know that sometimes you got to change some things? Maybe you used to wear the black coat. How about wearing the red when somebody say amen? You got to do something different in order to get what you want in life. Now, I want you to consider these six things, and I believe that if you will consider them and allow them to be employed in the grounds of your mind, you will start to see some changes in your life. Number one, the caterpillar is a daytime insect. But the caterpillar concerning the moth, the moth is destructive, and the moth come out of the same egg that's laid by the butterfly. There is one that's going to do some great things, and there's another that's going to do some bad things. And let's speak of the flesh and the spirit. Your spirit of God want to blossom and do great things. Your flesh want to do the things of the moth. So you have to ask yourself the question, are you vacillating between moth and butterfly? And, and once you determine who you are, then you need to move in that butterfly spirit and allow God to give you what you're supposed to have. Now, the butterfly, number one, the butterfly lays an egg. When the egg is hatched, it is turned into lava, that's L-A-R-V-A, which is the scientific term for caterpillar. Now, that simply means once the butterfly lays the egg, then the lava begins to metamorphosize into the caterpillar. Now, what I want you to understand is this, that when you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have received the seed of transformation through the power of the Holy Ghost. The Scripture says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, 
all things are become new. That's 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. But what I want you to note here, church, is that the moment you receive Jesus, you begin your new creation process. It's no such thing that I'm saved, but I'm not changing. It's no such thing that I'm saved, but I'm doing the same thing. I'm saved, but I'm still going to the club. I'm saved, but I'm still drinking. I'm still smoking. I'm still getting high. I'm saved. And the reason why your, the Holy Spirit won't allow you to do that, because how many of you in here know that when you got saved, there was a great excitement? And, and, and salvation means that you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, Romans 10 and 9, where it says that if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus with thine own heart and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt shall be saved. So you accepted Jesus. Now when you accepted Jesus, you have been endowed or you have been, in, you have been injected with the Holy Ghost. So you have the Holy Spirit in you. Now the Holy Spirit job is to go to work in you. Which simply means the things you used to do, you can't be comfortable in lying anymore. You can't be comfortable in drinking and smoking and getting high anymore. You shouldn't be comfortable in, in going to the club and, and, and chasing skirts. You, you can't be comfortable with that anymore. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will convict you, and that is the change that the Holy Spirit is working out and through you. Will the church say amen? So when you got saved, you received Jesus Christ, and your new creation process began. The egg was laid, the seed was planted, and now the Holy Ghost is ready to go to work. You know, when you first got saved, you was excited about serving the Lord. You was excited about going to church. You was excited about reading your Bible. But now that you're saved and you've been in this for a minute, and, and all of a sudden now coming to church may be boring to you. Like I said before, I question your salvation. How are you going to be saved and doing the kingdom work and be bored? And the devil is a lie. You either in it or you not. It's no such thing as being halfway in it. You can't say, well, I'm only in it when everything's going good. You got to be in it when all hell is breaking loose in your life. Will the church say amen? So, and, and, and know this, get this, and hear this. Because you are changing does not stop the devil from trying to kill you. If you know I'm right about it, just wave at me a little bit. See, because, because you decided to change does not mean that the devil is going to say, well, let me get out the way so he can make the full change. The enemy is while you're changing, he's still trying to kill, steal, and destroy you. So I want you to know that all of that is a part of it. Number two, the caterpillar would eat all day for seven days in order to ensure his change. Hear me, church, I wanted to get this now. We're talking about a caterpillar that crawls, and, and once the egg is hatched, he's going to eat all day for seven days. That's all he's going to do is, is eat, 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 eat. Why? He is eating to ensure his transformation. He's eating to ensure that he's going to do something different. See, while the caterpillar is crawling on the leaves and the branches or on the ground, he's eating. Now, note this. That does not mean that a bird can't come and pick him up. That does not mean that a cat can't scratch him. Y'all don't hear me up in here. That does not mean that... That he going to make it to his transformation. Are you with me in the house? It does not mean because his purpose is to transfer. Does not mean that he's going to make the transformation. But I'm here to tell you that if God is in it, then he's going to give you some grace to make that change. So even if the blue jay came to eat him, he couldn't eat him today. Even if the cat came to scratch him or to kill him, he can't kill him because when the grace of God is on your life, God is going to give you the ability to make that change. Will the church say amen? So don't worry about it. You know, when you first got saved, you know, as a believer, we must eat up the word of God. Sometimes we don't eat the word of God. Like the caterpillar, he ate he eats seven days consistently, all day, every day. Now, as a believer, when you first got saved, you didn't mind reading your Bible. You didn't mind studying. You was asking all kinds of questions. You wanted to blow the preacher's mind, the pastor's mind. 
You coming up to the pastor. Pastor, I got a question. Why? Because you're hungry. Your spirit is hungry. You want to know more about the word of God. You're hungry for the word. Just like the caterpillar was hungry because, see, the caterpillar understood that the more he eat, he ensures his transformation. So God told me to tell you is that the more you eat the word of God, you ensure your transformation. You see, you can't consistently eat the word of God and study the word of God and read the word of God and come to Bible study and come to church and, and you do you eating all this word up and then there is no change? Will you look to your neighbor saying the devil is alive? You see, somewhere along the line, there are some things you're not supposed to continue to do. Somewhere along the line, there should be a change. You know, it's time for a change, as the winding said. Somewhere along the line, there should be a change. But what happens is, I think the tendency is to get relaxed. And, you know, we, we get to where we want to be and we think that we got enough. But it's written, it says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, Matthew 4 and 4. So if I'm going to ensure my change, I got to eat the word. I got to be hungry for the word. Not for entertainment. Not for being a part of a clique. I got to be hungry for the word. I got I to gotta want to know what God says to me. I got to want to know what his scripture says. I got I to gotta want to know. I got to be intentional about knowing what God is saying to me. I got to get involved in my transformation. I, I, I can't just worry about transforming without getting involved in it. I got I to gotta correspond with my transformation. How many hear what God is telling you? See, I can't, I, I can't ask for God to change me and I don't correspond with what he's trying to change me to. See, the butterfly and, and the caterpillar, the caterpillar had to correspond with it. And I'm going to show you how he corresponded with it. So if you're still doing the same thing, it's been 10 years from now, and you haven't made a change, you haven't even got rid of that lie that come out your mouth. You know, you haven't harnessed yourself enough to know that, that I can do better. How many of you in here know you can do better? You're not really where you really at. You're just kind of going through it. The transformation, the metamorphosis, everything you need is in the metamorphosis. You got to be willing to be metamorphosized. You can't just stay back and do the same thing and then fussing and fighting while nothing is changing in your life. Will the church say amen? You see, if you're not eating the word of God daily, expect no change. I'm going to let you marinate on that. If, 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 if you're not reading the word of God daily, if you're not praying daily, there will be no change. See, reading the word of God and praying is like breathing. When you read, you inhaling. When you pray, you exhaling. So if you want to live, you got to what? You got to breathe. You got to inhale and exhale. You got to read your Bible daily and you got to pray daily. That's how you breathe. So if you want real change, you got to do that daily, not at Bible study, not on Sunday morning when it's time for Sunday school, not on Wednesday nights. You have to decide that you're going to get intentional in your life. Why? It's so you can ensure your change. The word of God is alive and that is a living word. It is a spirit seed that will cause you to change through the power of the Holy Ghost. I've noticed over the years the people that really don't change are people that don't want to change. I've learned a long time ago that grown people do what grown people do. If they want to study, they're going to study. If they don't, the tendency is to make excuses for what you know you're supposed to do. And you find yourself 10 years from now talking about if I coulda, shoulda, woulda, when all you had to do was make the change. Look to your neighbor and say, just make the change. See, the only thing that's holding you up is you. Can't nobody stop you from being you but you. 
I mean, the caterpillar said, you know, now just imagine, if you please, the caterpillar and the butterfly sitting at the table and they're having the conversation. Can you see them? And the caterpillar tells the butterfly, you think you're better than everybody else. And the butterfly said, what you mean by that? And the caterpillar said, every time I look up, you're flying all around and, and, and you thinking you're better than everybody else. And the, and, and, and the caterpillar gets an attitude with the butterfly. And the butterfly says that if you stay true to your transformation, you too can fly. But the key is sometimes we look at people at where we're going and we get mad at them. We argue with them. But they need to tell you that if you stay true to what you're doing, you can fly yourself. We need some butterflies out here that don't mind telling people that you got to crawl before you fly. Will the church say amen? So change is not, not easy. You know, it's, it's something that we decide to do. You know, you have to be willing to let God help you change your mind. And you shouldn't make excuses. Talking about where well, it's too hard, where well, it's hard on everybody. Well, I would do it if I had a ride. Well, I mean, I mean you can make it to the club pretty quick. You can go to them places. How I many know what them places are? You know, you, you can find them places. I mean, you can find little Rick and Shaquita and Nene and everybody else, and, and you can get there and be on time. But see, people that really want to change, uh, these are individuals that have made it up in their mind that, that old things for me have really been passed away, and all things for me has really become new. It is a decision, it it is a cognitive decision that there are some things I am not going to do anymore. You have to decide that I'm not going to do that no more. Ain't nobody got to pat you on the back of the head and tell you good job when they know you ain't doing good. That's called managing manipulation. You got to decide, you have to be intentional that, you know what, I don't do that no more. And you have to tell yourself until you believe it. I don't do that no more. I don't go there no more. So, so number three, as I give you number three, number three, the caterpillar goes and shed his skin by hanging upside down on a branch in a cocoon. Hear me now. See, a lot of times we want things to be easy, but sometimes, how many of you know, you may just have to hang upside down. You see, while you are in your transformation, while you are hanging upside down, you have to shed off the old skin of the old man, which is a process. Can somebody say it's a process? You know when you first got saved, your spirit became alive. The Greek there is called an awakening. Your spirit became alive. And when your spirit became alive, your flesh started to scream. Why? Because it is a paradox. Can holiness reside in sinfulness? Remember, man is a spirit, has a soul, lives in the body. So we're talking about your spirit, man, that became awakened. He is awakened. And your spirit is seeking God, but your flesh is seeking the things of the world. Paul said it this way when he said, the things that I want to do are the things I can't do, and the things that I don't want to do are the things that I do. Paul made the conclusion, he said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? He surmised it by saying, with my mind, I will serve God, and with my body, I will serve sin. See, that is a seemingly paradox. It's a seemingly paradox simply because Paul was wrestling with two natures. When you got saved, you're no longer the caterpillar. When you got saved, you got in your cocoon and you had to learn to shed off some of that old mess that you have. How many of you still in the shedding process? Come on now, don't lie to me because everybody in here is in the shedding process. Romans 12 and 2 saying, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, which is a process. And the only thing you're going to be doing until Jesus return, you're going to be renewing your mind. 
So that's why the only change, the only thing that's consistent in life is change because change is always changing. You ain't there yet. Stop trying to act like you're there. You're not there yet. You're on a journey to get there. You know, it, it, it has been saying that, you know, that, that we are pursuing perfection. <laughs> you know, we're, we're pursuing it, you know, running to gather it. But we have to correspond with the pursuit. We have to correspond with the grace so that God can allow us to be what he needs for us to be. You see, in order to get the change you want in your life, you may have to look like a fool. Uh-huh, to the educated and the wise. You may have to look like a dodo. How many of you have ever looked like a fool when you thought you was looking good? Uh-huh. You know, you know, you, you know, you put on your favorite dress and, and you walked out and said, saying to everybody, don't I look good? But, you know, but your dress wasn't properly zipped up. Somebody say amen. And you quickly went into the cocoon trying to straighten yourself out. See, in life, there, we are imperfect but striving for perfection. And we have the grace to change. So one thing I love about the caterpillar is that when he went, when he went into the cocoon, he didn't come out until a metamorphosis was done. Sometimes we come out too quick. We don't have no time in the prayer closet. As soon as we get saved, we want to preach, we want to teach, and you know you haven't dried off yet from the sin that you was living in. Will the church say amen? You got to allow yourself to grow up in God. Because you talk good, sound good, holler good, scream good, don't mean you're a preacher. Doesn't mean that you're even a good citizen. It means that you have good voice tones. Somebody say amen. You know, so, so it, it, the scripture says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, it says, it, pleases, uh, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. What I've learned over the years, God will use anything to get somebody saved. Now, that kind of sounds like an oxymoron. Well, will you, God use anything to get people saved. Well, he used a donkey to talk to his prophet Balaam to tell him he was on the wrong road. So don't tell me what he won't use. He used a woman that was married uh, five times and living with a man that she wasn't married to as an evangelist as she went on the road saying, come see a man that told me all that I've done. You know, he, he got to the point where he saw the natural alarm clock of the rooster. He said, rooster, I need you to preach to Peter because I told Peter before the cock crow, he going to deny me three times. And Peter denied him three times. And how many of you know the rooster began to crow? So don't tell me what he can't use. He can use what he want to use whenever he want to use it. You just have to be in position to be used by him when he needs to use you. Will the church say amen? You see, when you are in the, the metamorphosis, life may look like it's upside down. How many of you have been going through some changes and, and it seems like the more changes you go through, the worse it gets? Know this, it is in the metamorphosis where it gets better. See, because you are going through the change, the key is to continue going through it. The last thing you want to do is to stop going through it while you're going through it. If you're wrestling with an addiction, yeah, you may fall down but get back up. If you're wrestling with anything that's coming into your life, that's why AANA have finally come to the conclusion, and that is that addiction, relapse, is a part of, uh, is a part of changing. So when a person relapses, that doesn't mean that they're bad people, but relapse is a part of sobriety. So, so when, you, when you continue to go through the metamorphosis, things are not going to always be right. Things are not going to always fall in line. But keep going through the change. Why? Because there's going to come a time in your life where the stuff that you used to do, you are not only are not going to do it, God will take away the desire from you 
to do it. You'll find yourself saying, I don't know what's going on, but you know what? I, I, I kind of feel free right now. I don't know. I can't explain it, but I don't want that no more. I can't explain it, but, you know, I, I just feel free today. You know, God will give you what you need as long as you're cooperating with the metamorphosis and his grace. Will the church say amen? So it may look crazy. Some of you may be in a situation now where it looks crazy. You hanging upside down in a hammock or cocoon, and your metamorphosis is going crazy to you. But see, God says that I know you, and sometimes he will cause you to hang upside down because he know you need to hang upside down. Now, didn't nobody get that but me. I, I think my wife got that. See, see, some of us have to go through more than others. Hear me now. And the reason why is because some of us are so hard-headed and stubborn until God says, I'm going to allow you to hang upside down. He may even roll you around. Well, see, people learn at different levels. Now, I, you heard me say this before, that God has three ways to communicate with you. The first way he's going to communicate with you is his word. You may want to write these down, so if you wonder why you're going through something, then at least you'll know. He's going to communicate with you through his word. That means his word going to tell you by you reading it. His word going to tell you from a preacher. His word going to tell you through a prophet. His word may even tell you through a deacon. You know, his word may tell you through a song, song to pray. If you're spiritual and you're listening for instruction, God will give his word through all of those mediums to instruct you. So he'll give you his word. Number two, when he's trying to talk to you, God will also give you what we call a, a rhema word. Okay? That will be something that will come directly to you. In other words, you won't get it from a man. It'll come directly to you. And the third one is that God will allow circumstances in your life to talk to you. If you won't change through the word and you won't change through the rhema, now the rhema is, is a drop in. He drops it in your spirit and you have an epiphany and you say, you know what? Something told me not to do that. You just got some rhema. But if something told you not to do that and you do it anyway, then he now know he can't talk to you through his word. Because number one, you ain't listening. You ain't reading. You may, you may come into churches checking the box. You know, you like to look good, and, and you come in, check the box. You ain't got nothing out of the word. So then he says, well, since I can't give it to you to a man or a woman of God, then I'm going to drop some rhema in it. But you're so confused until you think the rhema came from the devil. Now you question and say, well, was this God or was this the devil? How many of you know that when you know God, you know God's voice when he talked to you? So he said, I can't get your attention through the preach word. I can't get your attention through the rhema. He said, I'm going to use something that always works. He said, I'm going to allow the situations and the circumstances of your life to chasten you. And then you coming in crying, hollering at the hospital, tubes all hanging up at you. Now you're crazy and now you're really getting in tune with God. Oh, Heavenly Father, please. Lord God, please take this off of me. I'm going to act right, Father. You know, then you make a plan with God. God, if you get me out of this, I'm going to do, and you know you're lying when you said it. Now, you probably meant it when you said it, but God said, oh, baby, I know that's what you're saying, but I see you two months down the road. I see, I hear you talking. I hear you squawking, but I see you two months down the road, and you're going to be doing the same thing you was doing before this took place. What is he telling you? The best thing to do is listen to his word. I don't know about you, but I don't want no consequences. I don't want to always have to be whooped by circumstances of life. I am not a spiritual masochistic. I really don't like pain because when God whoops you, he don't take his hands off you until he's done. Now, since he's eternal, that can be a while. 
because he loved you too much to leave you where you at. And since he wants you to change, he has to ensure your change by allowing things to happen to you. Will the church say amen? Oh, you're getting quiet on me now. That's the metamorphosis. Your change may not always be stable. It can be topsy-turvy. But allow the change to continue. Why? Because God has given you grace to change. If you keep on doing the same things and you keep on getting the same results, something wrong with you. In the therapeutic community, we call that crazy. Something wrong with you. You keep arguing about the same thing and your pride and your arrogance won't allow you to let it go. Look to your name and say, let it go. You've heard me say before, Sometimes it's good just to go home a different way. That's called change. Just, just go home another way. Why you got to follow your ritual all the time? You got to be willing to do something different because you go another way, you may bump into somebody that may have all the things you need. Why did that you talk to the same people every day, all day, and you look at your life, I can measure your life by who you talk to and who you read. If you continue to talk to people that are ignorant, and you continue to talk to people that are toxic, you continue to talk to people that get jealous of you when you're moving up, I would tell you, like, like, uh, like they said with Forrest, run, Forrest, run. You need to run from folks that, that really, really are not trying to strive for greatness in their life. Why? Because they'll get jealous of you and try to drag you down. Note also here that the caterpillar was not hanging around a whole lot of other caterpillars. Whenever you see one, you won't see five or six. You normally see one, maybe two. And he's eating to ensure his change. And that's what God wants me to tell you this morning. What are you doing to ensure your change? When you hang it upside down, it'll look like things are crazy, but it's not. You got to allow the change, and God has given you grace to change. Number four, while in your cocoon to become a butterfly, the caterpillar must first go through the metamorphosis, hear me now, by digesting itself. Hmm. Digesting itself simply means that it's to break down itself into a substance that can be used by the body. Releasing enzymes to dissolve all of its tissue with certain groups of cells surviving, turning the soup into eyes, wings, antennas, and other adult structures transforming its body, eventually emerging as a beautiful butterfly. Thus, while man in his own cocoon, becoming a new creation in Christ, he must digest himself, that is to break down himself, that is to die to himself and to mortify the deeds of his body. That is to put his flesh to death by bringing into subjection to the word of God. That is to become a substance that can be used by the body of Christ, releasing the power of the nine manifestation of the Holy Ghost, which is the soup Will the church say the soup? You see, when a caterpillar is transforming into a butterfly, he has to go through the soup. In the soup is the metamorphosis. He has to go through the soup. That means the caterpillar get new eyes. The caterpillar get New wings, the caterpillar get new antennas. The caterpillar is no longer crawling. The caterpillar is hanging upside down. 
You see, many times your metamorphosis is in positions that you don't particularly like. Your metamorphosis may be in a place where you don't think that you're supposed to be there. Your metamorphosis goes against your arrogance and your pride because God will change you by putting you in the pit with the hus, eating the slop with the swine as he did with the prodigal son. And the Bible says, and he came to himself. You see, you're looking for the metamorphosis to come when everything is going good. Well, the metamorphosis may not come when everything is going good. The metamorphosis could be tied up or linked up in your life when everything is going bad. And it's through the bad things where God begin to find out who you are. It's through the bad things God begin to know your character. It's through the bad things where God begin to see what's really in you. It's through the bad things where God begin to metamorphosize your life into what he wants you to be. If everything is comfortable in your life, the likelihood is that you won't make a change. Why? Because comfortable people do comfortable things. So God has to get you uncomfortable in order to ensure that the metamorphosis will come. You wonder why you're the same place, same way, ain't nothing working, you got a business like I have a business and I have to ask myself sometime, what are you doing different? Are you talking to the same people that told you no? And they told you no 10 years ago. Why are you talking to them? You have changed, but they have not. Why are you doing what you're doing? So the metamorphosis, God will say, I'm going to isolate you to motivate you. So sometimes you may find yourself on the island all by yourself, and God says, that's your cocoon. Now act like you know. See, everybody don't need to be in your life. Only people need to be in your life are the people that are, number one, love God and want to do something with what God has called you to do. The change is in the soup. Can somebody say the soup? I can't hear you, church. Say the soup. Come on, talk to me. Say the soup. I know you wonder what the soup is, but the soup is the Holy Ghost. Everything you need is in the ingredients of the Holy Ghost. The non-manifestation of the Holy Spirit, that's your soup. Now what I want you to know, church, that while you are in the soup, which is the Holy Spirit that's changing you, you see, he's in your life to cause you to have new eyes. That's why the Holy Spirit is in your life. You got new eyes to discern. You have new ears. You have a new mouth. You shouldn't be saying the same old toxic stuff you've been saying all your life. You got new eyes, new mouth. You should have a new mind. You are a new creation in Jesus Christ. That's the soup. Look to your neighbor and say, God want to soup you up. Now, you didn't get it, but we're going to do it anyway. Say, God want to soup you up. It's like they have these old cars and they want to what? Soup them up. You know how, how, how sometimes they add a stronger engine to a, to a smaller car in order to what? Soup them up. Sometimes they have those things on them that cause them those shock to bounce up and down. That's not the way a car really runs, but they want to soup the shocks up. And as the car rides, they is bouncing, going up and down. See, that's what God want to do to you. He want to soup you up. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm going to get souped up. Yes, he want to soup you up. Why? Because everything that you need is in the soup. It's all in the soup. What does that mean? You see, the soup is the super. And the natural is the thing. So when God soup you up, he's making you supernatural. So in order for you to be supernatural, he got to soup you up. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm souped up. You're souped up by God, which means that your metamorphosis come through the soup. 
See, it's all in the suit, the nine manifestation of the Holy Spirit. You know, God wants to give you word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discernment of spirit, faith. He wants to give you all of those things to soup you up, to make you into the superman on the earth that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. If you believe that somebody shall glory, you're not a natural man. You are superman. You wonder where they got that soup from? You are Superman because you've been souped up by the power of the Holy Ghost. Stop acting like a natural man. Stop performing like a natural man. You have the power of God to make the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the dumb to talk, and to raise the dead and cast out demons. You have been souped up for God to establish his kingdom in this earth. Stop acting like you're lazy and know what you got is in the soup. Well, the church says in the soup. So you're not just a natural guy. It's all in the soup. The metamorphosis is in the soup. So stir up the soup and release your gift. Stir up the soup and release your gift. Now, what does that mean? That means you got to get stirred up in yourself. Your mama can't help you do it. Your, your daddy can't help you do it. Your, your husband can't help you do it. Your wife can't help you do it. There's something on the inside of you that you got to decide that I am not going to be the way I am today next week. I'm going to change and make that change with the soup that God has put into me, which is the power of the Holy Ghost. See, the reason why you're not changing because you haven't stirred up the soup. Oh, you have the nine manifestations of the Holy Spirit. You souped up. You really are. You souped up. You got everything you want. You asking God for stuff that he's already given you. Well, how do we prove that? Jesus said it is finished. In other words, I'm not coming back to the cross to die for you again. It's all done. It's all done. Now, it's your, it's your fault if you don't read the word to find out what are the ingredients in the soup. So you want to add something to it, but he said, don't add none to this. Uh-huh. He said, don't add none. Don't, don't add none. Don't take none from it. He said, I know how to mix you up. I know how to get you right. He, he said, don't be adding nothing, don't take nothing from it. Isn't that what the word says? Add, don't add a jot nor a tittle. So the soup is the power of the Holy Ghost. The reason why most of us don't make the change is because we're not allowing the soup to be manifested in our lives. You don't like the soup. I need some salt in it. Why can't I put some pepper on it? And God said it's already seasoned for the reason of this season. And if you add more to it, you're going to mess it up. You already got what you need to deal with every demon that comes your way. You already got what you need. You are the seed that you need. And the power that you want is already in you. You got to decide that I'm going to start this soup up and I'm going to hit those bricks and go to the street and win some people for Christ. Metamorphosis, grace to change. Are you, are you willing to change or do you like it like this? Are you willing to kill yourself? That means die to yourself, mortify the deeds of your flesh. Or is it always about you? You're going to be 99, still talking about, well, they shouldn't have did me like that. You 75 running around here talking about, now they know how I like my stuff supposed to be. I mean, ask yourself the question, is it always about you? Because if it is, something wrong with you. You haven't died. You haven't submitted yourself to God. See, it's hard to stir up soup when the ingredients is still alive. Well, you get that next week. How are you going to serve a pot of stew and you got the chicken in there that's trying to get out? Somebody say amen. See, 
everything that's mixed in the soup has to be dead. And when the ingredients come in, it becomes alive when we ingest it. Look to your neighbor and say, digest yourself. Come on, tell them like you mean it, because you've been wanting to tell them that for years. Say, say digest yourself. I'm not going to tell you to tell them kill themselves, but digest yourself. Get yourself out of your way and get yourself out of my way. Digest yourself. Now, that's what the caterpillar had to do. Before he could become the butterfly, he had to digest himself. And that simply means to break himself down and allow the soup to metamorphosize him. Are you with me in the house? Hallelujah. So to become a substance to be used by the body of Christ. When we become the soup, we now can be used by the body of Christ. You know, God want to soup you up. He really, really do. But even when you're digesting yourself and going through your changes, how many of you know that the devil is still trying to kill you? <laughs> so you got to have grace to digest yourself. You have to have grace to make the change. I already know that it's, it's not going to happen right away because we all are metamorphosizing. You're going to have good days and bad days. You're going to have impulsive rush where sin is just going to be grinning at you. And in your heart of hearts, you're going to say, Lord, I want to do this sin. And, and before you know it, you find yourself giving in to it. Why? It's because that's what, that's what the impulsivity does. That's why they put candy in front of the store. They don't put it in the back. I mean, they, they don't have candy back there with the milk. No, they're, they're trusting your impulsivity. Your impulsivity is that you get up to the counter and, and you're looking at them gummy bears. And some of you like gummy bears so much, they know they got you, so they can put the gummy bears in an aisle and they know you're going to track them gummy bears down. Why? Because even when your impulsivity does not have access to what you want, you will hunt it down. Just like me with that monkey. I walk in the store and, and I don't see the monkey, so I start running for him. I start looking where the monkey at. And I go down the, go down the aisle and, and the monkey waving. I'm talking about chunky monkey. Somebody say amen. So the issue is that I have to get rid of the impulse. I can't let the impulse keep me from changing. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm going to change. Say, I'm changing now. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So why are you in the cocoon, cocoon to become, uh, why are you in the cocoon to become a butterfly? The caterpillar must go through the changes of digesting himself. Our biggest issue, and I say our because I'm speaking of myself, our biggest issue is to get ourselves out of our way so God can use us. And the only way I can get myself out of my way is that I got to digest myself. I can't digest you. My wife can't digest me. I can't digest her. I got to digest myself. Now, what does that mean? I got to break myself down. And I got to look at myself and say, you know what? John, I don't like that about you. John, I don't like that about you. And keep looking and say, John, I can't stand that about you. And just, come on, John. I got to go through all of these things and look at myself, being honest with myself, break myself down. And once I got myself down, those negative things, then I got to kill them. It don't say keep them in a box and bring it out. You know, when you get the impulse, I got to mortify. The word mortify in the Greek means to put to death those things that I know so easily beset me. How many of you in here got some things that easily beset you? You know, you do real good for a while. And, and you start patting yourself on the back. Look at me. Look at me. I'm doing good. And that same gorilla that, that you thought killed, that you killed, he can smell the bananas you got in your pocket. Somebody say amen. And he shows up again. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. It means you have struggles. It doesn't mean that you're not winning. It means that 
when you're in Christ, you win all the time, but in your flesh, you have struggles. That's what Jesus said. That's what Paul said. My grace is sufficient for thee. Grace to change the metamorphosis. Number five, when the caterpillar comes out of the cocoon, he still may be hanging upside down. But now as a butterfly. For a few days allowing his wings to dry before he fly. So what I've learned in life is that when you come out of something, you may not feel like that you're any better. I say many times, don't let the weather do destroy you. If you've been in a bad relationship and you meet another man or another woman, don't treat them like you was treated. That's residue. See, sometimes God will allow you to go through something that's very, very terrible, and he'll bring you out of it. You may be hanging upside down. You done went through the metamorphosis. You done went through all the tough stuff in your life. It was terrible. You done went through the bad stuff. But you're still hanging upside down. You're still in a cocoon. So when a butterfly goes through the metamorphosis, he has completed the metamorphosis. The, cat, the, the caterpillar has completed the metamorphosis. He's still in a cocoon as a butterfly, but he's still hanging upside down. And in life, you may have been through a whole lot of trouble. You may have been through a whole lot of problems, but God has already changed you. You've already been changed. You've learned your lesson. You know better. God has already changed you. The metamorphosis continue and God changed you. He brought you out. But you still feel like you're hanging upside down. And that's because the indictment of the devil. That's because the indictment is condemnation. There's therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. You're no longer condemned. If God brought you out, you may be hanging upside down. But know this, you're hanging upside down so your wings can dry. You're hanging upside down so your wings can dry. And hear me now, when your wings dry, I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. See, when your wings dry, then you can fly. So when you come through a situation, you may have the residue of feeling like I'm still in it, but God says the metamorphosis has taken place through my grace. And he asks you in the name of Jesus to recognize where he brought you from. You was crawling, but now you can fly. Will the church say amen? See, the devil still wants you thinking that as a believer that when you come out of your cocoon, you feel like you're still hanging upside down. The devil wants you to feel like nothing has changed. Or he haven't changed or they haven't changed. They still the same thing. But it's not about people changing. What I discovered that if I change, everybody changed. Come on now, church. Somebody should have got that. See, see, the metamorphosis is not so much about what they do. The metamorphosis is truly about what I do. See, I can change everything. I can be a chameleon. I, I can literally be the lizard that if he's on green, he turn green. If he's on red, he turn red. See, you got to be able to adapt yourself to the situation you're in while being connected to God, knowing that he's the one that's going to bring you out. Will the church say amen? Well, the church said the metamorphosis, grace to change. You see, the devil wants you to think that you're still crawling, eating the dust like a caterpillar. As long as he can keep you thinking that, yeah, that's just what the pastor saying, girl, ain't nothing changed. I've been doing this now for the last 10 years. Ain't nothing changed. Well, how long has it been since you came out? Oh, it's only been about three weeks now. See, that's the mindset that haven't got back in the cocoon and allowed the wings to dry. 
See, you, you can change your mind if you just settle enough and let God talk to you. Can somebody say, turn off the noise? See, the reason why you don't hear from God is because you got too much noise. See, a lot of you are asking God to do something that he's already done. But you still hang upside down. You're in your cocoon because it's safe. You got wings, but you choose to crawl. you get that next week. You see, you got wings, but you choose to eat the dust. He's already made you free, but you're happy being in the state of mind that you're in. You love it when people ask about how things are going when you need to be asking them how things are going with them. See, you have a victim mentality because you made the transformation, but now he says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, there, there, there's something that got to take place in your mind. And if you're not willing to allow your mind to be transformed, then you'll be in a new position with a wrong mental condition. You know, you can be in the right place, but have the wrong mind. <laughs> oh, you get that one next week. You'll be in the right place with the wrong mind, which means that you'll never be on time in the right place with the wrong mind. If, if, if you're at the zoo and you're a butterfly and you, think that you, and you think that you're a hyena, you got the right place, but what? Wrong mind. God can bless you and put you where he wants you to be. You can be in the right place but have the wrong mind. That's why we're commanded to be renewing our mind. When we renew our mind, then we can prove that which is good, that which is acceptable and perfect will of God. So the question is, change for what? That's what the thugs are saying on the street Well. You change that you may prove. That's what it says. Romans 12 and 2. Go there real quick. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm renewing my mind for what? What am I renewing my mind for? I'm making a metamorphosis, but for what? For what? To remain where I am? And the devil is alive. Why am I renewing my mind? I'm renewing my mind because when I renew my mind, I am now on a kingdom assignment. It's real. I'm on a kingdom assignment. To do what? I renew my mind to do what? To remain the same? No. The word says that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's why you change. You change so when people see you, they'll know that the presence of God is on you. You're not changing just so you can say, look at me, I've changed. It's not like changing a pair of slacks or shoes or a dress. The change is, is inwardly. And the beautiful flowers flows out of your mind. And it's, it's called the nine... Fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith. Against such there is no law. See, when you really change, then the fruit of the Spirit and the nine manifestations of the Holy Spirit should be the aroma that you carry. And why is that important? It's important because we live in a cold world today. How many know the world is cold? So the devil don't want you feeling like you've changed. So he wants you to hang around the same folks. Have you ever seen people that change but they're wrong with the same group? Hang around the same folks, ain't going nowhere. So you have a new position and your new position is in Jesus Christ. You are no longer crawling as a caterpillar. You are flying like a butterfly. The last point, number six. If you ever see a butterfly... The butterfly has four blocks on him. His wings, you got two at the top, two at the bottom. And when you see the butterfly, the butterfly was created by God in, 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 uh, in the larva in order to have his wings that are amazingly beautiful. 
But one thing in my study that I found out with the butterfly, the butterfly wings have two purposes. Number one, the butterfly wings normally have animals on his wings. Now, you, when you study the butterfly, you'll see that those are just not little pretty wings. When you really examine the butterfly wings, you're going to see snakes. You're going to see all kind of animals on the wings. And that's why they, they have butterfly eyes. So when a predator approach a butterfly, he's going to look at another animal. And he's going to think by observing that other animal that he will never attack the butterfly. Therefore, the butterfly says, I'm a, I'm a daytime insect. I don't hang out at night. The butterfly says, I leave that to the moth, you know, as a moth run into flame and as a moth turn up your clothes. So the butterfly is strategic in his life. God had made him so that, that, that the eyes on his back reflect the predator, but also if the butterfly wants to attract other butterflies, the eyes on his back are so attractive that other butterflies can come and mate with him. Oh, God has an awesome plan. So it's true for us. You see, when you got saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, you have the same order that God has put on the butterfly he's given to you. You see, as a believer, God has put his pattern on us to protect us from the devil. And he has his pattern on us to cause us to be attracted to other kingdom citizens. You see, when, you, when the devil looks at you, he sees your pattern, and your pattern is Jesus Christ. That is your protection. When others look at you, they should see your pattern, and your pattern is, again, Jesus Christ, and that is your attraction. So when God designed the butterfly, he designed the butterfly with his superintendent and purpose of causing the butterfly to live in the day and don't worry about the night. When God created you and I, he caused us to live in the day and don't worry about the night. Why? Because he said, he, he, he told us that, that, that the night is coming and that what we're going to do, we need to do in the daytime because when nighttime come, no man can do the work that God want him to do. So what I want you to know, church, is that you have the metamorphosis. The metamorphosis is in you. You can change. You have to want to change. You have the metamorphosis. You have to make it up in your mind that I'm going to stop doing the same thing that I used to do. I'm going to go into another place. I am not going to be the same person that I was. I am not going to run around with the same guys I used to run around with before I got saved. I am not going to drink. I'm not going to smoke. I'm not going to get high because I got the soup. I got the soup in me. And if I got the soup in me, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. I am a supernatural man able to cast out devils, able to make the lame to walk, able to make the blind to see, able to make the dumb talk, able to raise the dead. I am the supernatural man. I am the kingdom man that God God has placed into this earth and if you're going to metamorphosize you got to know that you got the grace of God to do it you got the grace of God to make it happen you got the grace of God to show some love you got the grace of God no longer should you be crawling you should be flying with the power of the living God if you believe that somebody shall glory, glory. why are you crawling on the ground when you've been meant to fly? Why are you crawling when you should be flying? The metamorphosis, grace to change. You got to want to change. You, you cannot want to remain where you're at. And when you want to change, there's nothing the enemy can do to stop you. Why? Because you got the soup. Supernatural power of the Holy Spirit that resides in you. And when you know that you've been souped up, there's nothing that the devil can do to destroy you. And when you know that, the change will take place.
be a slow, gradual change, but the metamorphosis is in the soup. Praise be to God. Let us get ready for communion as we get ready to close.